Welcome to the show, Five Strike Fam. I'm AJ. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. This segment is sponsored by Thinking Man Tavern, a cozy Decatur neighborhood pub. Grab a tasty beverage from a wide variety of selections and a plate of something delicious from the menu. To go, check out Thinking Man Tavern. Welcome back to another Five Stripe Weekly episode. And yes, unfortunately, not a lot went right against FC Cincy. A scoreless draw at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And yes, an ominous and uh, kind of bitter bit of news uh, near the end of that match. But uh, yeah, not a lot went right like i said it was a point of peace at the end of the day so uh atlanta united played against a 10-man uh fc cincy for the latter part of the match uh we just could not find that breakthrough and uh i thought yeah it was at least attacking wise one or more of our more fluid games but Unfortunately, we could not find the back of the nets. Uh, Ronaldo Cisneros got the start up top. Uh, Caleb Wiley, the homegrown, got the start on the left wing. And Thiago Almada and Marcelino Moreno did start as well. But yeah, you know, it just could not. Uh, it was not our night in terms of uh, the final product. Al Can also really had a fantastic match against us. Probably was the man of the match. He had six saves against us. Uh, I mean, I think that's kind of telling on the other side that there were zero saves and uh, for LA United that FC Cincy weren't really mustering too much. I mean, LA United had 27 shots to their 10. I mean, I mean, it's just uh, it's something that uh, LA United without Jose Martinez, it seems to be a symptom that it's very difficult for us to find the back of the net. But uh, yeah, there was a big moment and it was a penalty that was won by Caleb Wiley, who skinned a couple dudes, was able to get to the byline and put a cross in. And it was subsequently handballed by an FC Cincy defender. And so penalty ensued. Alec Can, who's no doubt probably faced Marcelino Moreno quite a bit in training, doing uh, penalty uh, shooting training and any of that, he knew where Marcelino Moreno was probably going to go. And uh, I think we've seen Marcelino Moreno, when he's taken penalties as well, go to the bottom right. He had him figured out. He dove exactly the right spot. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we could not break that deadlock. It was very much, uh, you know, even that uh, last quarter hour with 10 men, we could not break down FC Cincy, even though we threw the whole kitchen sink in terms of attack. Uh, Luis Ararujo came on. Emerson Heinemann also came back from his injury. I mean, there is definitely, I mean, pretty much all we could do uh, in lieu of having guys that are match fits and already, uh, you know, in good form. We're just, we have a bunch of guys that are still trying to figure out, uh, you know, how to play together, especially when our spine has pretty much been depleted within the squad now uh at the latter part of the match andrew gutman had a couple of good chances and he even said post-match that yeah luis Araruju, uh put a good ball in and he kind of shit the bed and uh yeah i mean we had our chances to put this game away uh the xg was something like three to their not really much of anything really against FC Cincy like I mean FC Cincy just did not have uh, much of anything going on in the match per se really but yeah uh, it really at at the end of the day this is uh, still a work in progress this team uh, I mean Gonzalo Pineda yeah I mean he did 
uh, like what he saw. It is something that uh, he said that Wiley, the way he was put in, he impacted the game exactly as he had designed. Uh, he did everything he asked him to do. Yeah, and in the final third, I mean, Caleb Wiley looked really, really good on that left wing. So, uh, yeah, he does have a very bright future indeed, as Pineda did say. And Cisneros, yeah, looked quite good connecting with uh, the forward players as well, as well as Brooks Lennon. I mean, there were some good balls that uh, were definitely, uh, yeah, could have been, could have been, but uh, he unfortunately could not find the back of the net either. I mean, only his, uh, you know, second match with the club, his first start, of course, like I said earlier. But yeah, the big news, I think, is that Brad Guzan going down in the 74th minute. Uh, yeah, non-contact injury. And it was revealed that uh, it was an Achilles after the match by Gonzalo Pineda. And we'll get to the uh, severity of the news after that. But uh, it definitely shook up some of the team after uh, the match in the press conference uh, when they were speaking about it. Smiles Robinson, uh, he definitely was uh, talking about how he felt hard hits. Uh, as you know, we all know that Guzan is a vocal leader on the pitch, and you know, there's definitely a lot of instructions and guidance to the younger players. He, uh, R Miles Robinson said, It's definitely devastating. He means so much to this team, he is a true leader, his energy is contagious, so it's definitely tough for us, especially me. You know, he's been a leader in my career so far, so definitely tough to take in, but it's something you've got to process with time. Uh, definitely, I think people see maybe the writing on the wall with a little bit of, uh, you know, this type of injury, uh, as you know, he went down immediately. Uh, after coming out for a ball uh, that was um, you know, a back pass. And yeah, he immediately signaled for the trainers. He had to be stretchered off. I mean, those medics, uh, man, uh, big unit in Brackuzan that they had to haul off there. Uh, but uh, Andrew Gutman also spoke about uh, Guzan after that. Uh, I mean, he said that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just that uh, you know, it's something that he uh, he knows how much of a leader he is to the team, and uh, you know, it's going to be the the shouldering of the load of uh, experience of leadership is going to have to be uh, you know kind of shouldered by some other players in the squad. Uh, Gutman might be more of a, you know. A veteran in that sense as well so uh, he might be relied on as he's got some experience in this league now yeah it's uh, at the end of the day you know we could not put the back ball in the back of the net as we all know but I think uh, you know there were some promising signs we definitely looked a lot uh, more connected in some respects in terms of the attack uh, now there's a lot of people ragging on Marcelino Moreno, uh, whether it's through uh, for good reason or for not. Uh, I mean, he's a player that's, uh, yes, he missed the penalty, but uh, yeah, he does bring the team forward a good bit. Does he dribble with his head down? Is he always finding the open man? Uh, it's maybe not always the case, but you know, that's one of those things where uh, you know, the talent that you bring in in MLS, there is somewhat of a, a cap to, you know, their ability. Uh, so there is that. I mean, Moreno, while we probably want more from him in some respects, he has been probably our most effective player for about a couple of years. Now, whether it's because he also is an effective player on some kind of mediocre teams so far uh, through his tenure with Atlanta United. It is something that's, uh, you yeah, is he a starter? We'll see. Uh, but definitely the Moreno and Almada connection, vitally important. But uh, yeah, it is, uh, you know, now with Luis Adarujo coming back, 
I think we'll need our uh, wingers slash, uh, you know, whomever is going to play the 10 to also be able to uh, not only create chances, but also finish them. And hopefully, you know, we'll probably figure out maybe uh, who's our, uh, you know, actual striker to actually put those balls away from the top as well. But yeah, uh, to pretty much wrap this baby up, can definitely deserves the man of the match in his return to Mercedes-Benz Stadium and to Atlanta. He definitely had a point to prove and boy did he prove it in a very ironic way as Braguzan is likely out for the foreseeable future and that capable backup that was Alec Can is now in the FC Cincy and having a <laughs> just standing on his head against us and uh, it's unfortunate it's uh, some bitter irony irony but uh, you know I think uh, we'll just have to kind of replace the uh, the pieces in the coffers and it's uh, you know gonna be without Alec can but uh, next up for LA United, it will be Chattanooga FC in the U.S. Open Cup, and I'll have that re preview for you later on in this show. But getting into the news, that bit of news that's massive is that Brad Guzan, he suffered a ruptured Achilles tendon on his right leg, uh, and it yeah, he will have surgery at a date still to be determined this week. But get well soon to our captain. And, I mean, he, he's, he's been a stalwart in our, uh, in our team. He's been the captain for, uh, yeah, for a long time for LA United as well. He is a guy that will be sorely missed. Definitely from a veteran standpoint and especially from... Uh, a goalkeeping standpoint as well. Uh, now, whether you think he has been, uh, you know, good enough for LA United or not at his wages, that's a whole different thing. No one wanted to see him go down this way, especially the type of career that he's had. It's hopefully we have not seen the last of Brad Guzan, uh, but maybe it might be at LA United. But uh, yeah, you know, the. Current starter probably will be Bobby Shuttleworth, uh, who was just signed this past offseason to replace, of course, Alec Can, and uh, you know some of those other options, uh, at least in house. It's probably going to be Justin Garces, uh, who, uh, yeah, he had been the starter for LAI two at the USL Championship, uh, but uh, yeah, beyond that, of course, Dylan Castanera also went down with an Achilles injury. Now, if that's actually something to do with, uh, you know, the turf that we play on or it's just fluky injuries, it's, I think I kind of edged toward the latter at this point that uh, these are kind of fluky injuries that, um, you know, is it turf related? Possibly, but uh, can you directly correlate it? It's really tough to say, but uh, yeah, that third goalkeeper. I mean, a lot of people will be wondering, oh, where's Rocco Rios Novo? He's still with Lanus. Uh, he went back to Lanus after he went on loan with us. And uh, frankly, uh, I think we all have questions about his size to do well in this league. But, uh, you know, ball playing wise, he was obviously very, very good. Now, uh, yeah, he was part of that Marcelino Moreno deal. So it's unlikely that he will play a part. Now, uh, at least in training today, uh, full disclosure, I'm uh, recording this on a Monday, but U19 starting goalkeeper Elijah Buford also trained with the club. Uh, and yeah, he probably could be uh, that third goalkeeper at least until we find maybe another piece. Uh, now, MLSsoccer.com. They looked around for what could be uh, some options. Uh, maybe Dane St. Clair from Minnesota United. Uh, now there was apparently, uh, so this rumor, Josh Cohen, who uh, uh, he had excelled at the USL Championship. He's an American goalkeeper. Uh, and he has uh, not only won Footballer of the Year uh, at Maccabi Haifa, 
but he also he has been a guy that's uh, he's made 118 appearances with Haifa and yeah he's done quite well he is a guy that uh, originally according to Tom Boger uh, was someone that had in there was interest and there were talks that predated Guzan's injury so he could be somebody that we are looking to bring in uh, and he is set to be a free agent at the end of the Israeli season and so it could be uh, someone that uh, you know we could sign uh, another guy maybe FC Dallas's Jimmy Marr maybe uh, LA Galaxy's Jonathan Klinsman I mean yeah there could be a few guys that could be uh, someone that LA United look at to at least replace some sort of um, you know maybe give some competition to Bobby Shuttleworth at the very least uh, but yeah it's definitely whew, it's going to be very very tough uh, with the roster construction rules of course and salary cap with MLS but uh, yeah so I'm sure there will be plenty of rumors and uh, some transactional uh, moves from LA United but uh, also LA United were linked with a striker or a forward right after the match against FC Cincy. Uh, that was according to The Athletic, uh, according to Paul Tenorio and Felipe Cardenas. That's U.S. men's national team forward Matthew Hopp. The 21-year-old, he's currently at uh, the relegation-threatened La Liga side Mallorca. Uh, and he just joined them last summer. Uh, for a reported near $4 million transfer fee. Uh, yeah, he did just at that point depart German side Schalke. But uh, yeah, he hasn't been playing a lot. Only played four games, has only had one assist. But uh, yeah, you know, in uh, 25 matches for Schalke last season, he had six goals and one assist. So, yeah, he's a player that could benefit from, uh, you know, maybe moving to LA United or maybe, apparently, uh, mystery MLS side uh, to try to play a part in the U.S. men's national team uh, when they play the World Cup in Qatar in 2022, in the latter part of 2022. But, uh, yeah, you know, he could be a guy that, uh, you know, I mean, he's 6'3", he can play it across the forward line. He could be a guy that could, uh, you know, not only play with Jose Martinez when he returns, but, uh, you know, maybe that long-term option if uh, he does, uh, you know, kind of want to play for a couple years to, um, you know, get some of that, uh, that, you know, that playing time so that he can become part of, the uh, the bigger setup of the U.S. men's national team, but we shall see. I mean, it uh, the MLS primary transfer window it will last through May 4th, and then the secondary transfer window runs from July 7th to August 4th. So now is the time we have to make moves if we're going to do it. Uh, now, uh, in terms of uh, some other news, there was the founding member wall. Uh, this past weekend, it was unveiled to a select group of founding members, and that wall is located at the Soccer Ball Plaza next to Gate 1, uh, kind of near the Home Depot backyard. And so if you are one of those founding members, then you might be able to find your name on that wall. That should be quite fun. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you are one of those founding members and if you uh, see your name on that wall. But moving on from that, LA United 2, they unfortunately fell 2-1 to Indy 11. Uh, it was uh, Grant Howard who recorded his first professional assist while Nelson Orgy made his first start for LA United 2. So, uh, yeah, you know, LA United 2, a little auspicious start to the season, a little up and down, but, uh, you know, it's kind of par for the course. Uh, it's a side that uh, plays a lot of young, young, young players, and uh, expecting them to win is probably not the thing. 
Moving on to the match preview and Adelaide United, they will play in the third round of the 2022 U.S. Open Cup. The <laughs> reigning U.S. Open Cup champions, of course. Uh, yes, the Five Tribes will play Chattanooga FC at Fifth Third Bank Stadium on Wednesday at 7.30 in Kennesaw. Now, uh, Chattanooga, yeah, uh, they're a familiar opponent to Atlanta United because they were the first preseason match uh, ever for Atlanta United. 4-0 win uh, way back in uh, 2017 on February 11th. And, uh, yeah, you know, we, of course, played them last season uh, for that preseason match March 21st in 2021. But, uh, yeah, you know, LA United, I think, are heavy, heavy favorites in this match. Even though Gonzalo Pineda, he did uh, note that he will take this game very, very seriously and that he does note that they will be a tricky side to play against. Uh, they have some wingers that will be, uh, you know, someone uh, and those type of players that they will be noting as danger men. So, uh, yeah, you know, Chattanooga, they are nothing to shake or stick at either they um they did beat uh usl championship side championship side memphis 901 so and uh you know they can surprise and we should definitely take them seriously but that does take us to who we would play and the predictions here now uh, between the sticks, obviously, will be Bobby Shuttleworth now instead of Brad Guzan, of course. And will it be a very changed side? I think it will probably be, but it will be guys that have seen some significant minutes still uh, early on in the season. And so I think it will be Ronald Hernandez playing on the right. It will be Robinson and Campbell as uh, Alan Franco is still nursing a little bit of a foot injury, maybe an ankle injury more so. Uh, and then Caleb Wiley I have as the left back. So Hernandez, Robinson, Campbell, and Wiley in that four-man defense. Now in midfields, I think it's going to be probably the first start for Franco Ibarra and, uh, just to get himself some match fitness. And I think Amar Sadich also continues on as uh, that other central midfielder. Now into more of the forwards and maybe uh, you know the attacking midfielders more so in that sense. I think it'll be Jake Mulraney getting the start on the right. I think uh, maybe Tyler Wolf will get that start on the left as he has been uh, you know quite industrious in a sense uh, on that left. Uh, definitely has brought a lot of energy and pressing uh, and maybe not the end product that we all want to see from the homegrown but um, I think you know to be able to spell him uh, because or not spell but him but spell uh, some of our other players like uh, Tiago Almada who hasn't played a ton uh, you know in terms of yeah, you know, basically, he probably does need to be spared from playing two week uh, or two match uh, days in a week. It's basically, I think, uh, Wolf instead of Almada and Marcelino Moreno, I think, will start in the middle and then maybe Almada does come on later. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think we'll have uh, a lot of firepower off the bench. And, uh, you know, in terms of who starts up top, I think it'll be Dom Dwyer. Uh, with that experience up top, I think it will be quite helpful. Uh, and so maybe he gets a couple goals and can get some of that confidence underneath him. But, uh, yeah, I think it's Dom Dwyer to start. Maybe Ronaldo Cisneros comes on later or Jackson Conway, uh, you know, and because, yeah, Jackson Conway has been doing quite well with uh, the USL side, LA United 2. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if either of them did come on and then the other one starts over the weekend. So I think it's going to be Ronaldo Cisneros starting over the weekend. So Dom Dwyer will get the start up top during this match. So, yeah, guys, what do you think? Uh, yeah, that starting 11, who's going to start, get at us in the comments below. 
But that gets us to the score prediction for this match. I think, yeah, Chattanooga probably will give us a little bit of some trouble. Maybe uh, early on, they'll maybe surprise us with uh, just maybe some fearlessness a bit. But I think we have the, the goods at the end of the day. We are the reigning champs. And knock on wood, hopefully we get the job done. And I think we do. 2-0 is my score prediction. What do you guys think? Let us know. But guys, that pretty much is the episode, uh, and except for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, well, Miles Robinson, he wore the armband as captain after Brad Guzan came off. Uh, now, Robinson, of course, he's been with the club since 2017, uh, and he recently made his 100th start for the Five Stripes. And yeah, of course, he's got 114 total appearances for LA United. So he is one of the more experienced guys in the LA United side in terms of uh, playing for LA United. So does he deserve to get that captain's armband? Let us know who should be the captain in Brad Guzan's steed. Maybe, uh, you know... There's other players on the squad that you think should be donning that armband. Let us know in those comments below. I look forward to what you have to say. But guys, that is the episode. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. I've been AJ. Thank you so much for watching. Oh!